All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Harris County Flood Control District's virtual community engagement meeting to discuss the flood risk reduction project near the Highlands Reservoir. This community meeting is being offered by the Flood Control District to continue to share vital information with the community during this period when in-person public meetings have been suspended due to safety concerns from the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Sheldra Brigham. I'm with the Flood Control District's communications team. I am joined tonight by a team of Flood Control District leadership and subject matter experts to continue to keep you up to date on these important flood mitigation projects in your community. We are also joined by staff from area elected officials, offices, and community associations. We are glad to see all of the community so engaged in these projects, and we look forward to continuing to share updates and keeping all of you in the community involved. Now, first, we would like to begin tonight's meeting with some remarks from Harris County Precinct Commissioner Adrian Garcia. Good evening, everybody. I'm Adrian Garcia, County Commissioner of Precinct 2. I want to thank the Harris County Flood Control District for hosting this important event. And before we begin, I want to share some thoughts about the ongoing pandemic. First, I hope you and your families are healthy and well. And I'm excited about the fact that we're starting to see some light at the end of this crazy tunnel. I'm working tirelessly to get as many vaccines out uh, to our precinct families and want to be sure that anyone who wants one and needs one can get a vaccine. Please follow my office on social media because it is where we will post information on the date, time, and location of vaccine sites that may be in or close to your community. And I will not stop these vaccine sites until everyone interested is vaccinated. And as of tonight, my office has helped to get nearly 20,000 people vaccinated in Precinct 2. And again, I'm not going to stop until we do all that is needed and wanted. If you have been vaccinated, I want to thank you and ask you to be an ambassador to others around you for getting the vaccine. Be an ambassador by telling your story and encourage your friends, family, neighbors, coworkers, even strangers at the store to follow in your in your example. Together, there's no doubt we will save lives. Not only will this vaccine save lives, but I know it will help save our economy as well. If you are hesitant, I completely understand. But I encourage you to speak to your doctor or a medical expert to help answer your questions or any concerns. I have received both of my vaccines, and I tell you that it has made me feel much more confident. If you have questions about where you can get your vaccine, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or simply call my office at 713-274-2222. I want to avoid a repeat of last year and I hope we never see another winter storm, which is why I'm praying that we will get a pass during the upcoming hurricane season that officially begins on June 1st. But we still need to be prepared nonetheless. Now, on to what brings us together this evening. Tonight, we're here to share results from the advanced feasibility study for the Highlands Reservoir area. The project team will be presenting their findings from the baseline conditions analysis tonight. Please know that I'm deeply committed to coming up with innovative solutions to address the current shortfall that we're facing in the funding of flood bond projects. During our last court meeting, I fought to bring more funding to address this shortfall. And I was excited when Commissioner's Court unanimously approved my proposal, which was to reallocate $230 million of excess toll road funds, which were made available when the toll road authority refinanced its debt, along with $115 million of available road and bond, uh, road and bridge bond funding 
or other surplus toll road funds to help pay for the projects around traditionally neglected communities. This plan will help reduce underfunding of flood bond projects by approximately 25%. It's a great step in the right direction, but we need to do more and we will. My office is working closely with the Harris County Budget Management Department to help close this funding gap even more. It's important to remember that your voice, your experiences, and your opinions do matter. So please continue to stay H, and please do not hesitate to connect with my office. When I hear from you, I use your point of view when I'm fighting to bring more resources to our and your community like I did at the last court meeting. Again, thank you all for joining us tonight. Be safe and God bless. And thank you, Commissioner Garcia. We appreciate you joining us to be able to kick off tonight's meeting. Now, this virtual public meeting will begin with a presentation to share project updates, including an overview of the study, the study process, and the study's next steps. The presentation will be followed by a virtual question and answer session with flood control district team members. Attendees will be able to submit comments and questions through the website or by phone. Now, any comments not addressed during the Q&A session will receive a response from the Flood Control District at the close of the comment period. Instructions on how you can participate in this virtual open house are on this slide. They're on the virtual meeting webpage, and they're also on the Flood Control District's website. And I'll also share a reminder of these instructions when we get to the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting. We will now transition to Gary Besmick, Feasibility Studies Manager with the Flood Control District. He's going to share information about the Flood Control District and then more about this project. Gary, over to you. All right, I think we got that going now. All right, uh, thank you, Sheldra, and a special thanks to each of you for joining us. In this presentation, we will give a brief overview of this project. Before we get to the project specifics, we want to share some information about the Flood Control District. The Harris County Flood Control District is a special purpose district created by the Te Texas Legislature in 1937 in response to devastating floods that hit the Houston area in 1929 and 1935. <clears throat> the Flood Control District was created to serve as a local partner to leverage federal funding for flood damage reduction. Our mission has greatly expanded over 80 years with billions of dollars in infrastructure improvements in the ground. While we are a separate entity from Harris County, the Harris County Commissioner's Court serves as our governing body. The mission of the Harris County Flood Control District is to provide flood damage reduction projects that work and that have appropriate regard for community and natural values. One of the most difficult challenges we face is constructing effective projects that are sensitive to community and natural values in a highly urbanized area. Harris County includes 22 main watersheds totaling approximately 1,800 square miles and more than 2,500 linear miles of channel. 2,500 miles is approximately the distance from New York to California. A watershed is a geographical region of land that drains to a common channel or outlet, and each watershed has its own unique characteristics and needs. The project we are presenting on tonight is in the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed. Our area is flood prone. Here are some reasons why. Extreme rainfall, including tropical storms and hurricanes. Our area is flat with slow draining land. And also our area is characterized with clay soils that do not soak up excess rainfall quickly. The Flood Control District works with other agencies and shares jurisdiction over flooding issues in Harris County. This slide illustrates that shared jurisdiction. Inside neighborhoods, as shown on the left side of this illustration, 
Storm sewers and roadside ditches collect stormwater runoff and start the process of moving the runoff away from streets and homes. Storm sewers and roadside ditches are the responsibility of the underlying municipality and Harris County engineering in unincorporated parts of the county. The larger bayous and channels that take the collected stormwater and move it through our drainage system to Galveston Bay are the responsibility of the flood control district. This is shown on the right side of the illustration. In the middle is a stormwater detention basin, sometimes constructed by the flood control district. <clears throat> when storm sewers are increased, this creates an increase in runoff. Since it is our policy to avoid impacts to properties downstream, detention basins help to safely take in and temporarily store excess stormwater during heavy rainfall events. Often, we partner with Harris County precincts, utility districts, and others to add recreational amenities such as trails to these basins and along our channels. On August 25th, 2018, Harris County voters approved 2.5 billion in bonds for flood risk reduction projects. This vote followed a series of meetings across Harris County in each watershed, which resulted in a list of what is now 181 bond projects. 160 of those 181 projects have been initiated so far, including all of the projects in the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed. A total of more than $1.2 billion in partnership funding has been secured so far to stretch the 2018 bond program even further. The actual timing of each individual project will depend on a variety of factors, including environmental permitting, right-of-way acquisition, and utility relocation, and in some cases, requirements of a particular grant. That said, project lists and projected schedules are updated regularly on our website. <clears throat> While the bond was for $2.5 billion, the full cost of every project in the bond table is almost $5 billion. So we made it clear from the outset that we would need funding partners to fully construct the projects in the bond program. As I mentioned, we've had some success so far, having secured more than $1.2 billion in partner funds. And this graphic illustrates the many sources of those partnerships, including federal, state, and local funding that Flood Control District is working to secure for Harris County. Each agency has its own definition of eligible projects and its own requirements for local match funding. So the Flood Control District works diligently to match projects to the right partnership opportunities. We will now move into the part of the program that is specifically about the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed and the flood risk reduction project near the Highlands Reservoir. <clears throat> Located in East Harris County, the Spring Gully and Goose Creek watershed covers approximately 32 square miles and includes about 60 miles of open streams. One of the two primary streams, Spring Gully, flows southward from the Highlands Reservoir area to Burnett Bay adjacent to the Houston Ship Channel. The other primary stream, Goose Creek, flows from the Highlands Reservoir area through the city of Baytown into Tabs Bay on the Houston Ship Channel. Due to the historically lower levels of urbanization, environmental sensitivity is high in the watershed. The Burnett Bay and Tabs Bay shorelines have been noted by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for their high environmental quality and habitat value. The study we are here to discuss tonight focuses on determining the optimal flood risk reduction solutions for the homes located just north of the Highlands Reservoir, which includes the Highland Mobile Estates and the Highland Ridge subdivisions. For tonight's meeting, we will refer to this area outlined on the map as the focus area. In 2017, the Flood Control District conducted an evaluation of the focus area which involved analyzing the existing risk assessment and evaluation of proposed alternatives to reduce flood risk in the focus area. As a continuation of the 2017 study, the Flood Control District partnered with the San Jacinto River Authority, who owns and operates the Highlands Reservoir, to further study and determine the optimal flood risk reduction solutions for the focus area. The purpose of this study was to explore opportunities to implement flood risk reduction measures 
in the focus area by investigating the potential use of Highlands Reservoir property to provide additional storage volume through the construction of a stormwater detention basin and or through the construction of channel conveyance improvements. In order to fulfill this study, study's purpose, we set a goal of determining flood risk reduction solutions that could lower the water surface elevation within tributaries 0119 and 0200. These two maps on the right side of the slide represent the current conditions and the goal conditions for this project. The yellow, orange, and red colors show the highest levels of ponding or standing water, while the green and blue colors show the lowest levels of ponding. The goal is to reduce the number of inundated structures. So while there is still some yellow on the bottom map, the risk of flooding is still expected to be reduced in that area. While every flood risk reduction project is unique, they all have a common life cycle. Each project begins and ends with a common and predictable milestones along the way. Whether a project moves forward from one stage to the next and how quickly depends on many factors, including the availability of funding, shifting community priorities, and other changing circumstances from year to year. As you can see in the project life cycle graphic, we just completed the feasibility stage of the study and are moving into preliminary engineering. During the feasibility study stage, we conducted an in-depth evaluation, identified and quantified problems, developed and explored possible flood risk reduction alternatives, and ultimately recommended a preferred solution. The feasibility study also informs the next steps, including the preliminary engineering stage, which is where this project is headed next. This stage will further define the recommended preferred solution, including identifying any needed rights of way, determine, determining any utility relocations, completing environmental permitting, and refining project cost estimates. Throughout the presentation, we will be using terms like the 500 year and 10 year storm event. So let's go ahead and discuss what that means. Using the 500 year storm event as an example, this event is a rainfall event that has a 0.2% chance of occurring in any given year. In addition to being called a 500 year event can also be referred to as a 0.2% annual chance event. That does not mean that if we have a 0.2% annual chance event today, that it will be another 500 years before it occurs again. Rather, it means that in any given year, we have a 0.2% chance that the 500 year storm event will occur. This is simply a measure of the expected probability of a specific rainfall event based on historical data. We will also be using a host of various terms when we talk about the causes of flooding and potential solutions. In our flood risk reduction toolbox, we have various techniques we can deploy to reduce the risk of flooding in a particular area. It is important to find the right type and right configuration for each project which is what we do in the feasibility study stage. On this slide, you will see several of our typical tools, but tonight we will focus on the first two items in the toolbox, channel modifications and stormwater detention. Channel modifications may include widening or deepening a channel to carry more water or improve a channel's efficiency by reducing vegetation or both. Stormwater detention basins are designed to receive and hold above normal stormwater volumes. The water then slowly drains out of the stormwater detention basin as the water level in the channel recedes. A dry bottom stormwater detention basin will remain dry before a storm event, while a wet bottom stormwater detention basin has a permanent pool of water, which helps the aesthetics and water quality. These days, it is common to pair channel modifications in a reach with stormwater detention basins. <clears throat> there are several other terms related to flood risk reduction solutions that we will use tonight. Tonight, we will discuss the berm around the Highlands Reservoir. The berm is the raised area of earth that surrounds the Highlands Reservoir. Next, we will refer to tributaries 0119 and 0200 by using their designated flood control unit number, or we may simply refer to them as the studied channels. Channels provide the pathway for water to move through the watershed. 
Channels may be something as small as a ditch or as large as Buffalo Bayou. As part of the subdivision drainage improvement project, we will also discuss tonight, we will talk a lot about culverts. Culverts are simply pipes that carry water from the neighborhood under the road and into the channel. Finally, we have outfalls. Commonly, you will see a pipe opening on the side of the road in a ditch, which is where the water falls out into the channel, and that is what we call an outfall. So getting into our study, we had five key tasks for completing this advanced feasibility study. First, we collected additional data via land surveys and other on the ground assessments. Second, we updated the 2017 assessment of existing conditions. Third, we developed and evaluated flood damage reduction alternatives. Fourth, we prepared recommendations based on estimated costs and benefits. And fifth and the final uh, and the fifth and final key task, we determined the ultimate flood risk reduction recommend recommendations for moving into the next project stage. Our study team went out to the focus area to observe and document firsthand the condition of existing drainage infrastructure. The two photos on this slide show the existing channels, tributaries 0119 and 0200. Our team surveyed the existing channels and culverts to obtain a more accurate picture of the existing terrain for use in the analysis. Additionally, wetland delineation and subsurface utility investigations were completed as part of our field work. Finally, our team collected information about previous flood damages, including FEMA claims and historically flooded structure counts to understand the most impacted areas. Now let's move back into our advanced feasibility study and its findings. Let's look at the cause of flooding in the focus area. This map shows the ground elevations for the focus area. Red indicates where the ground elevations are highest in the area, followed by orange and then yellow. As we get into the green and blue colors, this is where ground elevations are the lowest. As we look to determine the area of existing conditions, our analysis of flood claim data found that the majority of flood claims are focused in the southern part of the focus area between Lock Lamont Street and Barbers Hill Road. Many damaged structures in this area experience repetitive losses. Through a technology called LIDAR, which measures ground elevation, we observed that natural ground in this southern area is lower than the surrounding road elevations, which you can see here on the map in the green and blue colors. Therefore, this depressed area collects and holds stormwater runoff, which limits effective drainage out of the focus area. Ultimately, we found two primary flooding factors, insufficient local drainage infrastructure and relatively high surf water surface elevations in tributaries 0119 and 0200, which basically causes restricted flow out of the focus area. This slide shows the 500 year storm event inundation map from the existing conditions modeling. The red and orange colors show the highest levels of ponding during a 500 year or 0.2% annual chance storm event, while the blue and green show the lowest levels below one foot. The most common color on the map is yellow, which is between one and two feet of ponding during this large storm event. As you can see, ponding is widespread throughout the focus area, with higher ponding depths expected in the southern portion of the focus area, indicated by the orange and red colors, consistent with the historical flood data. The model results did show that street ponding occurs during more frequent events, such as the five-year and 10-year events. The existing level of service, which is the amount of stormwater a channel can carry before it's, it overflows its banks, was estimated for the three channels that were the focus of the study. We have already mentioned the first two tributaries, tributaries 0119 and 0200. However, we also looked at a third tributary, tributary G103-03, which is labeled in the dark green color on the far left side of the map, and is technically part of another watershed. However, its water flows are interconnected with tributaries 0119 and 0200, so it was included in our study. The existing level of service varied considerably, 
considerably between the three channels. And a closer look into the level of service for each of the three channels provided insight into the cause of existing flooding issues. Tributary 0200, which wraps around the west side of the reservoir and is shown in both the burnt orange and red colors, is shallow but wide along Barbers Hill Road, which results in a relatively high 50 year to 100 year storm event level of service. The level of service decreases considerably downstream where it intersects with tributary G103-03 due to the channel narrowing and heavy vegetation. Tributary O119, which wraps around the east side of the reservoir and is shown in the orange and bright green colors, is narrow along Barbers Hill Road, but then deepens further downstream, which is why the level of service increases to the 100-year and 500-year storm events as you move to the part of the tributary labeled in green. Finally, going back to tributary G103-03 in a dark green on the west side of the reservoir, this channel has a high level of service due to its relatively deep channel depth and steep slope. Its high level of service <clears throat> is why we wanted to evaluate it as part of our potential solutions. So, as we took our existing conditions findings and began considering flood risk reduction solutions for these channels, we pulled together a list of four key considerations. The solution must be done in co coordination with the San Jacinto River Authority, who owns and operates the Highlands Reservoir and is, a potential, and is potentially providing land for any stormwater detention and or channel conveyance improvements. The solution also must be a long-term two-pronged <coughs> flood risk reduction solution with both subdivision drainage improvements and channel conveyance improvements. The solution must work seamlessly with the planned Harris County Engineering Department subdivision drainage improvement project <clears throat> and ensure no additional flow impacting downstream areas. And finally, the solution must take costs, constructability, and anticipated effectiveness into consideration. <clears throat> Since the subdivision drainage improvement project <clears throat> is integral to our flood risk reduction pro project, <clears throat> we want to provide you with a bit of background on what the Harris County Engineering Department subdivision project will do. The focus area's drainage system consists of all roadside ditches with driveway culverts that flow to roadside ditches along Barbers Hill Road. The roadside ditch on the north side of Barbers Hill Road has several culvert crossings to the roadside ditch on the south side of the road. The subdivision drainage improvement study performed by the Harris County Engineering Department found that nearly all of these roadside ditches have disjointed flow lines that do not slope to the outfall on the south side of Barbers Hill Road. This causes for water to pool with nowhere to flow. The study found that many driveway culvert Crossings are also undersized, which causes water to back up in the ditches. Finally, as you see here on the slide and previously discussed in this presentation, the properties within the area of Barbers Hill Road, Srala Road, Lock Lamont Street, and Bramer Road are all at a lower elevation, causing a bowl, and the area floods before overtopping the streets. To reduce the risk of flooding via subdivision drainage, the Harris County Engineering Department study recommending, recommended the following solutions. First, replace select driveway culverts with larger reinforced concrete pipes. Second, increase the size of all culverts crossing Barbers Hill Road between Srala and Bramer. Third, fill in any low points in the drainage ditches to reestablish a positive drainage slope. And fourth, mitigate the increase in water flow from these drainage improvements by constructing a stormwater detention basin to hold the extra stormwater until the risk of flooding has passed. The Harris County Engineering Department team expects construction to begin in December of this year and to be fully complete by the summer of 2022. <clears throat> Moving back to the Flood Control District's advanced feasibility study for the focus area, with our previously discussed key considerations in mind, our process was a two-pronged approach. <clears throat> we started out with our alternatives analysis 
where we identified the optimal solution for reducing the water surface elevations in the area channels. This was the floods, flood control district's part of the optimal solution. Then we took the recommended solution from the alternatives analysis and combined it with the Harris County Engineering Department subdivision drainage improvement project plan. The optimal solution for the channels must take the increased water levels from the subdivision drainage improvements into consideration so that the two projects work together. After completing the culvert analysis, we came to our recommended optimal solution. So let's start with the alternatives analysis. As a reminder, the overall study goal was to reduce the risk of flooding in the focus area by lowering the water surface elevations in tributaries 0119 and 0200. Five different alternatives and a total of 12 scenarios were evaluated through a detailed alternatives analysis process. The proposed alternatives focused on utilizing land owned by the San Jacinto River Authority for additional storage volume and conveyance. The various evaluated alternatives are shown here on the slide. Generally, the alternatives focus on a handful of flood risk reduction strategies, including relocation of the Northern Highlands Reservoir berm, constructing channel conveyance improvements and or a new stormwater detention basin, and installing culverts to move the water to certain specified channels. As expected, the alternatives produced a wide range of water surface elevation reduction benefits, depending on location and the extent of the proposed improvements. These water surface elevation reductions ranged from roughly 0 to 2.5 feet in the channels. Water surface elevation reductions for each alternative were weighed with that alternative's estimated costs and constructability to identify which alternatives performed the best so those alternatives could be further refined. The number of anticipated flooded structures is reduced for all evaluated storm events. Changes in the estimated number of flooded structures were calculated based on a simplified and approximate methodology and used to compare different alternatives. Now that we have covered the alternatives analysis, let's talk about the culvert analysis, which was the other part in determining our final project recommendation. Separate from the alternatives analysis, we wanted to determine if just improving the culverts under Barbers Hill Road could provide a simpler and less costly solution to reduce existing flooding issues. Therefore, the goal of our culvert analysis was to perform a high level test to assess the contribution of the Barbers Hill Road culverts to the focus areas flooding concerns. We modeled and evaluated several different scenarios in order to answer this question. Since the Harris County Engineering Department had already performed an evaluation on neighborhood drainage and made recommendations for culvert improvements, we used their data and recommendations for our evaluation. Using their information ensured we were not reinventing the wheel and that we were fully coordinating any of our proposed solutions with their proposed neighborhood drainage project for the focus area. The graphic on this slide shows the Harris County Engineering Department's proposed culvert improvements along Barbers Hill Road. <clears throat> the culvert analysis found that relocation of the Highlands Reservoir berm and Barbers Hill Road culvert improvements work together to reduce flood risk for the focus area. Generally, just adding additional culvert capacity by itself did not provide significant benefit and even resulted in small adverse impacts to the flood control district channels. This confirmed that the ultimate solution would need to include both local drainage improvements and channel conveyance improvements. Moving the reservoir berm provides more storage to lower the water surface in the channel, which allows more water to drain under Barbers Hill Road. In addition, neighborhood drainage improvements help facilitate drainage out of the focus area and into the channels. Going back to the existing conditions and goal conditions maps we discussed at the beginning of this meeting, the modeled results showed a reduction in ponding in the focus area and decreases in ponding depth between existing conditions and our proposed solutions. Benefits to area structures were determined to be similar for the proposed solutions, which suggested that the ultimate solution may involve relocating the berm some distance between 100 and 200 feet. <clears throat> Therefore, the flood control district recommends moving forward with the alternative that will include the following two-pronged solution. 
Relocate the existing Highlands Reservoir northern berm south by 200 feet, which makes room more room for stormwater to travel down the channel and upsize the existing culverts on Barbers Hill Road and add additional culverts. This is part of the plan for the Harris County Engineer, Engineering Department subdivision drainage improvement project. During the next stage of the project, further refinement will be needed in order to ensure the project is the most optimal version of the project. But we do know that any improvements performed by the Flood Control District must be done in conjunction with the Harris County Engineering Department subdivision drainage improvements. Now, let's look at what the next steps are for the project. With this project now moving into the preliminary engineering stage, our advanced feasibility study recommends five items be considered. First, continue coordination with the Harris County Engineering Department and the San Jacinto River Authority. Second, collect additional data needed to better define the recommended alternatives. This may include additional environmental and utility data that will help refine the recommended alternative and assess the constructability. Third, refine and optimize the recommended alternative with the newly collected data. Fourth, update the hydrologic and hydraulic modeling to incorporate the new data and an updated refined recommended alternative. And finally, prepare an estimation of project costs and anticipated project benefits from our new and improved concept. During the preliminary engineering stage, the Flood Control District will be coming back to the community to provide an update on the project's progress through the project lifestyle. I will now turn the program back over to Sheldra to kick off the question and answer session. All right, thank you, Gary. Uh, before we move into the Q&A portion, I do want to share a quick reminder that we'd love to hear from you on this project and other projects that are rolling forward across Harris County. To learn more about this project, to ask questions, and to sign up for our mailing list, you can visit hcfcd.org forward slash Highlands. Now, if you have questions specifically about the subdivision drainage improvement project, you can contact the Harris County Engineering Department at recovery at eng.hctx.net. Now, as a reminder, there are three ways that you can submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can submit a comment on this site in the box near the presentation live stream. You can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website. That's hcfcd.org forward slash Highlands or you can submit a comment via phone, and that number is 855-925-2801. You'll want to utilize the meeting code 3507. And if you are joining us via phone tonight, you'll want to press star six to leave a message. Now, additionally, I do want to reiterate that any questions not addressed during tonight's Q&A will receive a response from the Flood Control District following the close of the public comment period. Information from this meeting, as well as a recording of the live stream, will be available on the Flood Control District's website, and you will also be able to find that on our YouTube channel. Now, joining Geary for our Q&A session tonight is Jing, who is overseeing project efforts for the Harris County Flood Control District, and Sanjay, who is leading the subdivision drainage improvement projects for the Harris County Engineering Department, as well as Dina, who is Planning Division Manager for the Harris County Flood Control District. And now it is time to take some of your questions. First question will be for Gary, and it's from Logan. Logan is asking, what is the current stage of the project, Gary? <clears throat> um, the current stage of the project is the transition point between what we call feasibility <clears throat> and the preliminary engineering. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the feasibility stage is really the first stage where we try to identify what the project will be. <clears throat> you know, we're looking at all kinds of different alternatives and what what can we do in this area to reduce the flooding in the project limits. Once we go through the alternatives and we select an alternative, we then move the project to preliminary engineering, which is where they now focus all their attention on the recommended alternative that we've given them and they start refining it to the point of having final design plans so that the project can ultimately be um, constructed. So right now, the preliminary engineering has been kicked off 
and we're transitioning, like I said, out of feasibility and into this now beginnings of design. Thank you, Carrie. Our next question is for you. It's from Mrs. Schwartz. And the question is, what was the result of the advanced feasibility study? Thanks for asking. Uh, the result of the advanced feasibility study is um, what we call the preferred recommended alternative, which um, you know entails relocating the northern um, uh, San Jacinto River Authority reservoir firm uh, further south, and um, that works in conjunction with a concurrent project that Harris County Engineering uh, Department is doing in the within the subdivision. Um, they're doing drainage improvements, uh, adding additional culverts under Barbers Hill Road and uh, under the streets within the focus area. So we've chosen this preferred recommended alternative because it was uh, the lowest cost um, in uh, relation to the amount of uh, flood reduction benefits that it provides the focus area. Thank you, Jing. Next question is for Sanjay. Mr. Friedman is asking, how did the Harris County Engineering Department come up with this solution? Thank you, Mr. Friedman, for the question. Uh, the Harris County Engineering Department did an extensive survey of the subdivision, did uh, drainage analysis and modeling of the area to determine what can be done to convey more stormwater from the subdivision south to the south of Barbers Hill in conjunction with Harris County Flood Control District's project. Uh, so the, the result is we are working with uh, existing terrain, existing elevations, as well as the limited right of way. Given those constraints, we were looking to see how much more stormwater could be moved off to improve the level of service of the dra drainage systems. Uh, this would then translate into uh, ditches being filled where there is no longer ponding, uh, replacing those culverts with <coughs> larger uh, reinforced concrete pipe and multiple boxes connecting the drainage system north of Barbers Hill, as in the drainage system within the subdivision, and convey that stormwater to the southern portion south of Barbers Hill, which is where the flood controls project is. That will become the mitigation of the detention pond for this uh, stormwater runoff from the subdivision and thereby increasing the level of service of the drainage system. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you, Sanjay. Jing, the next question is for you. And Mr. Salas is asking, is the flood control district partnering with anyone on this project? Yes, we are partnering with the San Jacinto River Authority, even though they're not a funding partner. Um, we've been working closely with them in, um, throughout this process of um, uh, 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 getting this project completed. Um, and we will be, um, you know, we are in the process of working with them to also utilizing um, the reservoir land that they are currently own. So. Thank you, Gary, Mrs. Velasquez is asking, can you please re explain the goal of this project? <clears throat> sure. Um, the, the, the primary goal, you know, I, I just went through a pretty lengthy um, presentation, but basically the primary goal of this project was to try, it's the same goal that Harris County Engineering Department had, was to try to identify alternatives, projects, actions that we could take to provide flood relief for historical homes that have flooded in the Highlands Mobile Estates and the Highland Ridge subdivisions. So. During the bond project, when we were identifying projects to be put into the bond through community inputs and through historical data, we found information about homes flooding in Highland Mobile Estates and the Highland Ridge area subdivisions. And so the, the initial goal was pretty simple, was you know what can we do in this area to provide flood relief? And Harris County Engineering within their jurisdiction was trying to look at what they could do within the subdivision but as we discussed in this uh, presentation, it turns out that by doing a project on the channels in conjunction with improvements in the neighborhood, we can actually provide a much better uh, flood reduction benefit. And so that's kind of what the ultimate findings found. Thank you, Gary. Next question is for Dina. And Dina, Mr. Belvedere is asking, how does the flood control district project fit into the Harris County Engineering Department's subdivision drainage improvement plan.
Christina, you're muted. Thank you. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, what I was mentioning is, if you recall earlier in the presentation, we had a slide that talked about the different types of drainage facilities there are. So there are some of those local drainage improvements within a neighborhood that people typically think about, like the storm sewer system or roadside ditches. Um, in fact, I believe in the Highland Ridge area and Highland Mobile Estates, it's mostly roadside ditches serving those areas. But once those uh, local, what we call local uh, infrastructure, pick up drainage from the uh, neighborhoods, they need to carry it away and typically they outfall or drain into a larger flood control channel. So that might be a small ditch or a creek or a good sized channel um, like you see on the south side of the Barbers Hill Road. So in this case, the flood control district channel serves as an outfall. So it would be where we're going to be receiving that extra flow or that drainage that's coming from those improvement projects that Harris County Engineering will be constructing within the Highland Ridge and Highland Mobile Estates neighborhoods, you know, they're going to increase the carrying capacity and provide a much more efficient way for water to drain out of those neighborhoods, bring it across Barbers Hill Road, and then we will be capturing that extra water in the flood control channel 0119. Now to make sure that we aren't sending more water downstream and exacerbating flood risks for other communities, that's where the project comes in place that Gary described where we'll be moving that berm um, that currently exists around the reservoir, moving it to the south and increasing the storage capacity within channel 0119. So it'll really be a nice partnership project between what the county engineers are going to be constructing within the neighborhoods and then the flood control channel can serve as an outlet and a detention area, extra storage to capture and hold that water safely that will be draining out of those subdivisions. Thank you, Dina. Next question is for Sanjay and Ms. Fellows is asking, uh, what is the benefit of the Harris County Engineering Department's project? Thank you, Ms. Bellows for the question. Uh, the benefit of the Harris County Engineering Department's project is specifically to improve the level of service of the drainage system within the Highland Ridge Highland Estates subdivision. Uh, this is to try and get more stormwater to flow from the subdivision into the detention pond that is going to be south of Barbers Hill. And it'll be accomplished by uh, the culverts uh, that we talked about and boxes that will connect the subdivision to the southern part of uh, uh, the region uh, into a detention pond, which then becomes part of the overall Harris County Flood Control District's project. Thank you. Gary Jonathan is asking, will this project eliminate flooding altogether? <clears throat> That's a great question, Jonathan. Um, really, the what we are trying to do is identify a project and the base condition that we're looking at is around that 100 year amount of rainfall. And so we pretty much no project we do is going to ever eliminate all flooding altogether, no matter how big a pipe, no matter how big a channel we put. Um, there's always a chance that the weather is going to have its own idea. You know, um, Hurricane Harvey is a really good example of that. You know, Harris County had in three days, 40 something inches of rain. You know, we would probably never design projects around the county to try to accommodate 40 inches of rain in three days. Um, so basically what this project will do is reduce the day to day flooding and reduce flooding up to, you know, 16 to 18 inches of rain in 24 hours, which is around what our 100 year event would be. And it will provide benefits. But if we ever get a really big hurricane, there's still always going to be chances that people can flood. And that's part of the reason we always recommend people consider buying flood insurance, because no matter how big the infrastructure is, there's always a chance that flooding will still continue. All right, thank you, Gary. I do want to uh, give everyone at home a reminder that there are three ways that you can submit a comment about this project during tonight's session. You can do so, uh, there is a comment box, it's near the presentation live stream. Uh, you can submit a comment on the Flood Control District's website, hcfcd.org forward slash Highlands, or you can submit a comment by phone, and that number is 
2801. You'll want to utilize the meeting code 3507. And again, if you are joining us by phone tonight, you can press star six to leave a message. Now, I do want to reiterate that any questions that are not addressed tonight will receive a re response from the flood control district. That's going to be after the close of the public comment period. Now, information from this meeting, as well as a live stream um, of the a recording, rather, of the live stream, that's going to be available on our website. Um, and you can also go on our YouTube channel to rewatch everything from tonight as well. Now we will go back to some of your questions. Our next question is for Gary, and Mr. Walters is asking if we can go back to slide 21 and explain more about the causes of flooding in our area. Folks always want to are interested in those that information. <coughs> sure, um, I think I'm muted. Uh, there we go. Um, you know, relative to the project goals that we had, we were really looking at these subdivisions. You know, that are north of Barbers Hill Road. And the primary cause of flooding here is that, and, and we're looking at the, hopefully all at the same graphic, but north is pointed upward. And when it rains in this area, the orange and red colors represent the highest elevation of land. And the green in this or the blues are the lowest. So when we get a large rain event, <clears throat> water is going to want to drain from the north to the south or from the top of this exhibit towards Barbers Hill Road. Because Barbers Hill Road is elevated, as that water drains down, if you have a really small event, that water will probably just go into the, the roadside ditches, cross the pipes and get out with minimal bonding. But when we start getting these larger events, what ends up happening is that water is all going to drain down and if the water cannot effectively, efficiently cross from the north side of Barbers Hill, where the homes are, to the ditches on the south side, that water will just continue to build up. And ultimately, um, the elevation of Barbers Hill Road controls how deep it can get, depending on the amount of rain, and we see homes flood. So in order to fix the flooding out here, there has to be a way for the water to efficiently move out of the neighborhood but once it gets to the other side of Barbers Hill, there has to be a place for that water to go. Because if we did everything and just did improvements in the neighborhood, there would be benefit. But the ultimate benefit, the largest benefit is moving more of that water out of the subdivision, putting it into our channel. And then we widen our channel, put in detention so that we don't push that water down and flood somebody. So that's generally how this area floods is it's water trying to make its way out of the subdivision and the channels that take that water are not efficient enough to take it somewhere. Thank you. Next question is for Sanjay and Jason is asking, how much does the subdivision drainage improvement project cost? Thank you, Jason. Uh, the estimated construction cost of the subdivision drainage improvements project is about $1.6 million. This is just the subdivision portion of it, the pipes, the ditches, and the detention area uh, south of Barber's Hill, and not the overall flood control project. This is just a subdivision portion of the project. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, Dina, Mrs. Gorley is asking, is there a problem to buy out existing repetitive lost properties? And if so, how is the price determined? Sure, we do have a buyout program at the flood control district. And I'd like to say, well, the best way to get more information about that is if we could get your contact information. Um, as we showed earlier, there you go. We've got uh, the web address here where you can go ahead, um, send an email, give us your contact information, and then we can reach out to you and talk to you about the options through the buyout program. Thank you. Thank you, Dina. Uh, Jane Bart is asking, why does this area flood so often? As Gary was alluding to earlier, and when we were looking at slide 21, um, this focus area has a history of re repetitive flooding, and because flooding uh, usually, and then flooding usually begins, you know, as as low as a 10-year, 10% storm event. Um, the terrain on the focus area is that the drainage is flowing south towards Barbies Hill Road, and it um, 
currently does not, um, you know, uh, the pipes underneath the road are uh, not at a capacity where um, the water can cross uh, underneath effectively, and it is causing uh, water to pull in the southern portion of the uh, focus area. Thank you so much. We have another question here for Sanjay. Uh, Kathleen Howell is asking, are there any plans to deepen the ditches along Braemar Street? Thank you, Ms. Howell. Uh, there are no plans to deepen the ditches as Gary just showed us on the on slide 21. Uh, we are limited by the terrain. What we're trying to do is to fill in the low spots and have a positive slope so drainage Storm water can be conveyed towards the boxes that will convey this water from north of Barbers Hill to south of Barbers Hill. There'll be some regrading of ditches. There'll be new RCP pipes, reinforced concrete pipes, uh, to replace the culverts, and that will help move the water from the north of Barbers Hill to south of Barbers Hill. But the the county engineering project is probably going to start uh, sooner than the flood control project. We are still on the project that we are focused on, which is half of the coin. The other half is the engineering department. We're moving our project into feasibility. Uh, I'm sorry, into the preliminary engineering. So we're probably looking at, you know, somewhere around a year to a year and a half. Uh, and Dina or, or Jane could jump in if I get off on that. But we're probably looking at something in that time frame. Um, there's a little bit of uncertainty on our side because we are only through feasibility, which means we still need to pull some of the specific details on pipelines and utilities. And if anything pops out during the, uh, the design process, there may be things that could delay the timing. But generally speaking, you know, in that year to 18 months, uh, we should be able to get through the design and then we'll bid the project and then we would go to construction. So Sanjay, maybe you can talk a little bit about the schedule for the Harris County Engineering Department's improvements in the local drainage. Certainly Gary, thank you. Uh, the, the Harris County Engineering Department's project that is a subdivision drainage improvements project, you will likely see dirt begin to be moved uh, in December of this year. And the project should be complete uh, in late May 2022. Um, as Gary pointed out, the flood controls project, uh, we need the detention on the south side of Barbers Hill for the water to go from the subdivision under Barbers Hill through the boxes into a detention area so there is no uh, adverse downstream uh, flooding impact. So the detention basin will also be built as part of this project. And the subdivision improvements will also be part of this project starting in December 21 uh, and be, should be complete by May 2022. Good deal. That is all the time we have for this evening. Do you want to thank everyone for taking the time to tune in to this virtual community meeting and want to thank all of our presenters tonight as well. And also, we like to issue a final reminder for you to purchase flood insurance as flood season runs year round in Harris County. Have a great evening and take care.